What is up guys, welcome to the channel. For those who are new, my name is Ace Noguera and in this one I am going to show you three incredibly powerful tools you can use the next time you retouch portraits. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on the computer and get started. All right, we are here in Photoshop, and the first tool that we are going to go over is the Spot Healing Brush. You can find that over here. The icon looks kind of like a Band-Aid. If you right-click on it, you'll get you'll see it gives you a few more options uh, in case this one is not properly selected by default. Go ahead and click on the Spot Healing Brush tool, and we'll get started with that. Also, if you do not see this uh, side panel here, the way that I have it set up now. Um, if you come over here on the top right, you'll see that you have different workspaces you can pick from. And um, we are currently under Essentials. So in case you don't see those, make sure you have that workspace enabled. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into our image here a little bit. And we can see that there are just some blemishes and what the Spot Healer Tool Brush does is it essentially gets rid of them really, really quickly and automatically. So if we just kind of paint over, in this case, just click, you see it kind of removed that. Do the same over here, same over here, and so on and so forth. And essentially what it's doing is it is pulling data from around the point of where you're painting, collecting that, and then morphing it and essentially blending it together on top of the spot that you painted. Usually this yields an amazing result, as you can see. It's just a really easy and quick way to go over a lot of blemishes to get rid of them pretty quickly, and for the most part, quite accurately. Um, it also helps with strokes like this over um, a forehead per se, per se, so you can kind of get weird or you can kind of get rid of some of uh, the wrinkles here. This is also a tool that I use to get rid of some hair flyaways, such as these, the ones that have um, a lot of light hitting them and just kind of come off as a highlight. You can do the same and then just kind of paint over them. For certain areas though, like this one, you can kind of still see that stroke. Sometimes it'll help going over it again but at a different angle of a stroke. You see how that kind of produced a much better result. So it's one of those tools where the more that you use it, the more you will uh, kind of get a feel for what it can and can't do or what it can do really, really well. So let's go ahead and jump to our next tool. And I will use this for an example. Um, I'm gonna actually stick with the spot healer brush and give you another example here. So let's go ahead and enable that. And you can see this would be technically a little bit more difficult for it to automatically recognize because there is this shadow or this uh, corner here of this piece of wood coming over, or I'm sorry, coming behind this highlight. But sometimes it does a really good job. As you can see there, it did a really, really good job. It's a little bit off, but honestly, if you're looking at the image from about here, you're not going to notice. And the same goes for, you know, areas like this, you can use a spot healer on as well. Now let's go to the next really awesome tool that I use all the time. And that is our patch tool. Now our patch tool is a different variant of essentially our spot healer. And what it does is it allows us to basically pick any area on our photo canvas here and move it and clone it in a particular way. To give you an example, you can see this couple here that decided to uh, sit and kind of ruin my shot, but no big deal. We can go ahead and remove them quickly with this tool. So basically, once the tool is selected, we can kind of draw around the object we want to remove. I usually go pretty tight around the object that we want to remove. Let go, and you can see that it gives us a highlighted dotted line here. Now, if we click on the inside and hold, it allows us to drag this anywhere on our image. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just bring it down here to the corner, and you can see already it's giving you a nice live preview of how it'll look before you deselect the mouse. So if we unclick that or let go of the mouse, you can see Boom, it was like they were never there. Now, a lot of the times you could see this part was a little bit darker. A lot of the times it may not be exactly correct, but you can just easily do it one more time, move it out of the way, and it gives you a nice result. As you can see, if you didn't know I edited that out, you would not be looking at it twice. Um, one thing here that you can see is you have three little uh, shadow spots. It almost looks like an unnatural duplication, if you will. 
Now, sometimes this tool can be really, really useful when you are doing a lot of editing and using different tools that might have uh, created some duplicates. And basically, it's a dead giveaway that the photo was photoshopped. Now, you can use this patch tool to kind of get rid of those and essentially randomize these areas. See, for example, just like that. And by randomizing a lot of those areas or the areas that you Photoshop, it really does help give a more realistic look and makes it a lot harder for people to realize that that area was Photoshopped. So that is the patch tool, extremely helpful in removing objects. I mean, it also can help you remove blemishes just like the spot healer does. It's just a different tool that reacts to the photo a little differently. So let's go ahead and jump to our clone stamp tool. This tool is basically kind of what it sounds like. It's going to clone one area of the image that we get to pick and paint over the other area. So I'm going to give you a quick um, rundown through this image. And let's go to our clone stamp tool, which is going to be right here. The shortcut for that is the keystroke S. And from there, we are going to essentially select the area that we want to source and clone from. I just use my right brackets just to make the uh, brush a little bit bigger. If we hold down the Alt key, you can see that the cursor changes. And now if we click on any one of these areas, it's going to now clone that source. So now you can see I kind of bring it over here and just start painting. Obviously, that doesn't look too good but it kind of gives you an idea of how this tool works. Now, you can see that as I have it held down and I'm currently painting over this area, it shows you another little crosshair, almost like a plus symbol, if you will, and that is where it's sampling. So as you can see, we move down, and that area keeps that same distance from our brush. Let's go ahead and get rid of that real quick. Another thing to really keep in mind while using this tool is if there are things like this, as far as lines that have different shades or different colors or even different uh, gradients or exposure, you want to make sure that when you do select a source, it's going to be linear in that respect where if we do want to paint over this, we can make it look fairly natural by keeping that same line. So. If you have it up here and you're kind of like trying to make it a, a look pretty good, as you can see, it's not going to look good. So you want to make sure that you do source right on the line and kind of keep that same stroke, as you can see here. See, that looks a little bit more natural. And like I said, going back to the original example that I, I pulled this image up for, it can really help you eliminate a lot of... Um, flyaways just like that. Now, if you right click, you can change a lot of your hardness, um, which will give you a more softer feathered edge of your brush. As you can see here, it's pretty harsh and that doesn't exactly look good or fit well with this image, but I just wanted to quickly give you um, a rundown on that. I'll show you a little bit later on another uh, photo how we can also use this tool. Now, another quick tidbit, um, as you can see, there are some harsh areas here. You can kind of tell there was some uh, Photoshopping done. Now, going back to what I said pre previously was you want to make sure that a lot of those things are kind of out of the image because you want to make it look as natural as possible and like it was never Photoshopped. So we can use our patch tool once more and just kind of grab these areas drag them over. And as you can see, it really does a fantastic job of blending some of these things together. You can see there's actually a duplicate here, but like I said, we can randomize that, make it look a little bit better, bring it over to another area of the photo. Here we have some harsh lines of the brush strokes. We can come over as well and boom. So it just, it's a really awesome tool for blending things together just as it is object removal. For example, over here, there's a little bit of a, a pipe sticking out of the ground. Let's go ahead and quickly remove that. Boom, it's like it was never there. And as you can see, there is some uh, consistency here. So if you wanted to randomize it, like I keep talking about, I mean, you can come over here and do that. Now, the reason why I brought it all the way over here was because one thing you need to remember is you need to put it in a like situation. So 
That's why I kind of brought it over here. As you can see, this texture and color and line is uh, very similar to this. So you don't want to just basically bring it up here and move it up to an area that looks completely different because you're going to get really bad results like this. So just something to keep in mind. All right, and I'm going to give you another really good example on how you can use the clone stamp tool to go ahead and remove flyaways. So let's go ahead and zoom into this image a little bit and you can see what I'm talking about. There are some flyaways here that we can easily clean up with this tool. So to enable the tool, go ahead and click S. And just as before, if we hold down Alt, you can see that it changes our cursor and we can now source different parts of the image. I'm going to source that part up there. And now that we have that sourced, we are now cloning that spot over where we're painting. And it's really important to keep in mind, it's, uh, you need to really resample your image, as you can see there, because what was happening was I had sampled over here. And as soon as we start getting close to this palm, you can see that it's starting to clone that down here as well. Obviously not something we want. So it's important to make sure that you resample or re-click your source so that it's out of the way of objects you may not actually want to clone over as well. So we'll just do this real quick to give you an example. That is looking pretty good. Now you can go ahead and really fine tune this as much as you want, but just to kind of give you an idea, that's how it works. Now, again, for object removal, you can use a lot of different tools like the ones that we went over in this video, but you can also use, for example, a spot healer to get rid of maybe this um, line right here. And we could just go ahead and paint over that and see how the image reacts. See, it did it pretty well. So it doesn't look like we need anything more there. Now, another thing to kind of keep in mind when you're using the spot healer brush is the way that it works is it's pulling data from around your brush stroke. So the reason why that is kind of uh, complicated in situations like this is because if I get close to this area, it's pulling data from there as well. So as you can see, it didn't really do too great of a job of removing that little piece of that rope or that string. So you may want to use something like your um, clone stamp tool and just sample around it and kind of just paint it away. It'll usually yield a little bit better results when you are dealing with darker objects um, and a lot of uh, different colors, if you will, or different contrasts like this, as opposed to using your uh, spot healer. So it's just something to keep in mind. Like I said, though, the more that you use these tools, the more you will realize what they're fully capable of and how you can actually apply it to your everyday workflow as far as retouching portraits or object removal or really anything in general. Well, guys, that is going to wrap up this little tutorial. It was originally going to be a quick one, but ended up turning into a little bit longer. Hope you found it insightful or in the least bit entertaining. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel continue to grow. And with that said, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.